What is going on, investors? Hopefully, guys are doing well out there. That is right. It is Friday, and that means it's time for the Fang Stock Recap Show here on the Investor Channel, where every Friday we recap all the major news and the technical chart patterns from all the major Fang Stocks. And the question everybody is asking this week is, can the rally in mega cap tech, particularly Fang Stock tech, can that continue as we move into earnings season? We've got Tesla next week. We've got Netflix next week, but we better kick things off like we always do with Meta Platform. So the week at 213, this one just continuing to move higher up nearly 4% to finish the week at 221.50. WhatsApp, which is wholly owned by Meta Platforms, turns on merchant chat payments in brazil a lot of commerce gets done on whatsapp not just silly little chats and memes and things like that and so we'll see if meta can really turn this into a big revenue driver moving on to apple start of the week at 161 also up on the week up over 2.5 percent finish the week at 165.20 apple tv plus apple's version of its streaming software or streaming entertainment as it's probably better understood is in a deal to come to canal plus subscribers those of you in the united states have no idea what canal plus is but that is a tv network in france and other parts of European territories. Apple just continuing to roll this out. They started with their own ecosystem. I think they gave you like a, a three-month trial, maybe even a 12-month trial of it for every new Apple device that you bought, but they are obviously starting to roll this out across other platforms. Apple set 2025 target of using 100 recyclable cobalt batteries in all of their Apple design products, including their laptops and more importantly, their phones. Apple glasses, which would be some of Similar to maybe like my glasses, but then maybe be able to, to uh, you know, virtually or somehow project some kind of images, maybe notifications on my phone or something like that. We're likely not to see that for several years. However, many analysts are projecting that maybe at the Worldwide Developer Conference, which is just a couple of months away, I believe we might actually get to see the first details of that quote unquote headset that Apple is rumored to be working on. Apple is in talks to manufacture MacBooks in Thailand. Read a lot of research this week, one on Bloomberg and a couple other places that talked a lot about how Apple is continuing to diversify their manufacturing, but they're obviously very, very much close tied to China and they're very much closely tied to TSMC, which is also has some China risk as well. But they're moving into India with the phones. They're moving into Thailand with the MacBooks and they have other capabilities abilities out there, but don't expect this to expand to where all of a sudden most of their or half of their manufacturing is out of the country of China. It's going to be a slow process. Global PC shipments, speaking of slow, fell 29% in Q1 and the growth is expected to return after 2023. You obviously had a major upgrade cycle when people started to work from home. They needed maybe better capabilities. A lot of employers also giving credit or giving essentially money to employees to upgrade maybe their computer system or an iPad or something like that. So a lot of people took advantage of that. And obviously when you upgrade your computer these days, you don't necessarily need one for maybe a year or two at the very least. And so we're seeing a lot of computer makers, including Apple, likely seeing weakness when it comes to PC. Now, Apple said to be testing new Macintosh laptops with processors similar to the M2. I don't think that's the story here. They're working on a larger screen to the MacBook Air, which I think would be a popular device among computer buyers as well. The bigger story is they are continuing to work on their M3 chip. Apple probably going to roll out a new chip every year. How much better it will be than the previous year's version depends on some things. I believe the gap from M1 to M2 was maybe 10, 15, 15, 20%, but the next gap from M2 to M3 chip might be a little bit larger because they're working on a five nanometer node when it comes to their M2 chip. They are likely going to go to three nanometer technology over at TSMC for the M3 chip, and that likely will boost some performance and likely the power usage as well. Serious Logic, which is a component manufacturer, I don't know anybody, honestly, that invests in these like component manufacturers. I tell you what, you've got to have uh, the stomach of Pepto-Bismol to be able to 
survive kind of the up and down swings here because there's a lot of rumors that come out and Apple may change the iPhone 15 design to take away a lot of the solid state buttons and that obviously will hurt component makers that make those buttons. Moving on to Amazon, start of the week at about 99 bucks and some change in the week up about 2.6% to finish the week at 102.54. Amazon rose earlier in this week after we heard from the CEO. And I tell you what, one of the reasons why a, a stock like Tesla has such a large valuation is you are constantly hearing from Elon Musk. I actually think these CEOs should talk more, should give their opinions more, should actually be far more open than they are because you see the reaction in Amazon's stock price after Andy Jassy wrote his annual letter, which I read through the entire thing. I wasn't particularly impressed with it. He didn't really even mention third-party sellers, which makes up the largest growth on their e-commerce platforms on Amazon. He just briefly touched on AI and said, I'll have to write another letter on it in the future. I wasn't particularly impressed. But look, Wall Street was. He talked about the chips that they're designing, how they're different than the NVIDIA chips, how they're cheaper, how they might be more efficient in the future when it comes to large language modeling and artificial intelligence, which is all the rage. I tell you what, if I was one of these CEOs, I'd be out there pumping all the time. I see Andy Jassy post on LinkedIn, but like nobody, nobody reads that. Amazon starts to ramp up a new development of its MGM properties. This is not the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, which would be uh, spe probably spectacular weather there today. You'd be out by the pool, that's for sure. But they closed the $8.5 billion deal of MGM Studios, which holds a, a large amount of film titles, uh, including over 4,000 of them and over 17,000 television episodes as well. So what this company is doing, and we're also seeing this when we get to Netflix as well, what they're going to do is they're going to spawn off movies that were successful in the past. Now they're going to make a TV show about it. Maybe they'll make an animated version of it. Maybe they'll make a video game of it. Obviously, the sequels in the movies happen on a regular basis as well. Sometimes maybe you can create a re reality show spinoff of this. And so Amazon is diving into the content that they purchased and going to monetize it in more ways, and you love to see that. Now, Amazon is going to charge a fee for UPS returns in a cost-cutting move. This is actually a surprisingly popular news story this week on Seeking Alpha. I noticed this stayed uh, towards the top of trending news, and this had over 165 comments. Essentially, if you have an Amazon return, one of the ways you can return that is take it to a UPS store. But what Amazon is going to do is if you have a Kohl's or a Whole Foods where you can also return Amazon goods, and you bypass those to go to a UPS store, well, they're actually going to charge you for that. They're going going to drive you into Kohl's and they're going to drive you into Whole Foods before they drive you into the UPS store, or at least they're going to charge you for that. I actually applaud this move as a seller on Amazon. Maybe this will discourage some people from doing returns. Moving on to Netflix, started the week at 334 on the eve of earnings. This one's up 1.9%. Finished the week at 338.62. I misspoke. 1.29% gain on the week. Netflix earnings just four days from now on April 18th after the bell. And the street sees volatility around the password crackdown. Obviously, the company is no longer giving streaming. I don't even know if we get a su an overall subs number, but we're not getting guidance. They used to give you kind of plus or minus guidance on the sub growth, you know, year over year. And you could extrapolate laid out for a quarter over a quarter growth. We're not getting that anymore. And so we'll certainly see how the password crackdown where they're not allowing you to share, you know, one, your fan, you know, your brother buys a Netflix account and then you're on there kind of binge watching what you want on your brother's dime. They're not allowing that and they're starting to like curb that. And, and so we'll see if that impacted kind of subscriber numbers. But more importantly, I actually think how will it impact revenue and profits over at the company? It could be that it profits are up because of that. Now, Netflix plans an animated version of their hit series, Stranger Things. I love what Netflix does, okay? They come out with a series. Then they come out with, if it, obviously a big hit like this, they come out with a second, planning probably this into infinity as long as the director and the producer of these programs want to continue to do that. Well, then you spawn off an animated series. Then you spawn off a reality show. Then you spawn off a video game. Then you sell the merchandise. And Netflix, obviously, you know, playing the role of Disney that has done that for decades. Netflix scores streaming eyeballs 
calls with, quote, you and the Chris Rock special. I think the latter, the Chris Rock special, which I believe was streamed live. I haven't been able to catch it yet, but I've had a number of friends being like, I can't believe you haven't watched this yet. This is definitely very exciting if you're a Netflix subscriber, certainly a Netflix investor as well. These types of events, these types of kind of one-off things that probably don't cost a whole lot. Obviously, you got to pay Chris Rock. He's not going to come cheap, but you don't need months and months of filming and sets and design and production work and editing and all these types of things you pay chris rock he gets up there and does his thing and you get a top top hit just based on that now speaking of hits and speaking of being on top nvidia start of the week at 268 this might be the first week this year this stock was actually down on a five-day basis finished the week just basically flat at about 267 and some change the company slipped earlier in the day as it unveiled new lower priced ai enhanced gpus this was actually a two days ago they announced the rtx 4070 chip which is going to allow pc gamers to render image at a at higher resolution and give the quality that uh, gamers tend to expect with NVIDIA. Now, all important price, going to come in at $599, which is actually impressively about the same price as the RTX 3080, so a generation ago, and it's going to utilize about half the power, which is obviously great if you're trying to cool this thing down, and it is going to include an additional two gigabytes of memory. This comes on the heels after NVIDIA announced a GPUs last year late last year that were largely viewed as very very expensive but I think what we're seeing with Nvidia is they're actually very intelligent with their pricing strategy they didn't price the previous GPUs that they announced for the consumer market they were pricing that for Microsoft which is going to buy a ton of them to do large language models this RTX 4070 is priced for the gaming market and we'll see how that is received in the market over the next couple of quarters now nvidia stock was actually down a little bit more earlier in the day but it erased some losses i don't think it was because of this headline but i just thought this was interesting that they have gpus selling for more than forty thousand dollars on ebay now here's the deal this h100 chip which is kind of the backbone of a lot of the ai training and those types of things that happen in the background before you kind of uh, let your language model out into the wild if you will these h100 chips sell for they have a price tag of like 40 to 50,000 so one selling on ebay for 40,000 after you subtract ebay fees is about what it actually should probably sell for moving on to google start of the week at 107 up about 1.5 percent Finished the week at about 108 and some change. The rally continues with Google. But earlier in the week, the stock slipped a little bit as a judge narrowed the Sonos claims against Google. This stems against a lawsuit with Sonos alleging that Google infringed on some patents related to streaming music and other wireless technology. This is largely viewed as a win for Google as the judge did declare that Google did not impinge on some of its patent in a willful manner and that found some of Sonos's patents were actually found to be invalid. Corporate lawyers at the mega cap tech stocks are the best in the world. And so when you see them go toe to toe against another company, and especially when you see them go toe to toe against the United States government, which do not have the best attorneys in the world. I'm not trying to put anybody down. Look, it's just like basketball. It's just like football. It's just like any competition in the world. There are people that are really good at it. And there's people that are just good at it. And the corporate lawyers at Google, Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, these are the Michael Jordans of the business. Google slated to ask a judge to end an antitrust case. I looked at this headline and I was like, which one? I think Google has about two or three antitrust cases, at least in the works. This is related to their dominance in search, if not their monopoly in the search market because they have deals for the Safari browser and the Mozilla Firefox browser. We'll see what a judge decides here. A ruling in that not expected for a few weeks. Google revamps live TV guide to allow people to discover over 800 
free channels. How about throwing up an investor channel link on there too? That might improve ratings over here on the channel, but it's just basically pulling in some of these free channels that are out there. I think it's a good move for Google as long as it doesn't clutter up the offering. Now, YouTube set its NFL Sunday ticket pricing and no surprise, it's actually higher than 2022. Now, the base price is going to come in at $349. That is this if you already have an existing subscription to YouTube TV, which comes in at $72.99. DirecTV charged roughly about $300 for the same service. Now, if you don't have YouTube TV, but you still want to watch out-of-market NFL games, you're going to have to pony up $100 more, close to $450 for those rights. However, there is some inaugural pricing, as these things often do. There is kind of a early bird window, if you will, until June 6th. You can get it for $249 if you have YouTube TV and $349 if you just want the standalone streaming service. I tell you what, as a Cincinnati Bengals fan, I don't get to watch their games out here in California, but a lot more of their games are on TV. And if you have NFL Plus, which is the NFL's app, you can watch games like five to 10 minutes after they end. So this year, I would just not watch football in the morning. And then when the Bengals game was over or when I thought it was over, I would check the NFL Plus out and then I could replay the game with actually no commercials. So I could finish an NFL game in about two hours. I don't know if I'll actually subscribe to this because the NFL Plus offering is actually pretty good. South Korea bills Google for $32 million for blocking rivals video games. Google apparently forced Korea game makers to exclusively release games on their Google Play Store, not allowing those games to be accessed on rival platforms. And Google got slapped on the wrist for a $32 million fine. Moving on to Microsoft. Start of the week at 287. Actually dipped down uh, pretty decently all the way down to, we'll call that 282, but got most of it back. Finished the week roughly flat at about 286.14. Europe creates a task force to look at open AI's chat GPT. I tell you what, anytime the government starts to look at what you're doing, you're probably doing the right thing, I think. Microsoft's cloud momentum better than feared. This is according to Webbush. Now, Webbush is projecting that when this company reports earnings just a couple of weeks from now, that they'll be able to produce low 30% Azure growth in the most recent quarter. This is obviously relatively bullish for Microsoft, but also likely bullish for Google, Amazon, and maybe even to a lesser degree, or maybe even a more degree, to companies like Oracle, which has been on fire, and also IBM, which has been performing relatively well as well. Moving on to Tesla, the big winner of the week, I believe. This one started at 177, up nearly 4.5%, finished the week at 185, and it was all on news that the company is continuing to cut prices. So when Tesla reports their earnings, I believe we're just five days away when Tesla reports their earnings. Some of these price, oh, actually a lot of these price cuts, not the what most recent ones that we'll talk about here, won't show up on the earnings, but we'll see. Okay, Tesla has been doing a lot of price cuts on not only on their high-end models but obviously their more popular models and their best-selling models the model 3 and more importantly the model y i think the most important thing that we'll see is yes over the last year they've dropped the price on these models especially over the last quarter or so but component cost their manufacturing capabilities some of their tesla's kind of fixed cost or operating costs and certainly the cost of goods those have probably been brought in as well. And so we'll see the balance there and we'll see if the Tesla margins are really hit by these price cuts or if they're just simply going to be offset by lower input costs. That's what I'm really, really looking forward when Tesla reports their earnings again just about five days from now is the vehicle gross margins is it really going to take a big hit or is it just going to be a smaller than expected hit because all the cost of goods and the operating costs also coming in? Now, Tesla is going to expand its price cuts to Europe, Singapore and Israel. And th this obviously is going to hit Tesla, but we'll have another news story here. This is really hitting the competitors of Tesla, which are already somewhat behind the curve when it comes to manufacturing these models, especially for a profit. I don't think there's any other EV maker in the world that is actually making EVs 
profitable, particularly at the scale, certainly at the scale of Tesla. I mean, it's not even up for debate, but like nobody makes money selling EVs. And now we have Tesla cutting their costs and likely still making money and still being able to reinvest in their business, not having to take on uh, absorbent amounts of debt to get it done. I, I would not want to be an, another car maker trying to compete against this, at least in the shorter run. Now, the EPA, this is also going to throw a wrench in especially American car makers, when uh, car makers around the world that want to sell their cars into the American market, the EPA proposes aggressive new quote clean vehicle standards, and it projects EV acceleration. The last part is uh, somewhat irrelevant. These clean vehicle standards, where they force you to make these cars at an efficiency that tends to drive down profitability. And what do we know about Ford? What do we know about GM? They are funding their EV business with the profitability of the traditional ICE engine. So if the EPA comes in there and says, you've got to get, you know, five to 10 miles per gallon better on your engines, well, that's probably going to drive down profitability over these companies as they have to do R&D, they have to do changes, they have to do all these things to the cars. It's pretty much a nightmare. That's why Ford has kind of been, you know, sitting on a level basically for a a year now kind of cycling in between it the economics are getting worse on the combustion engine and the economics just simply aren't there with the ev i think these car makers are going to figure it out but it, it's going to t it's not going to be like a short-term fix now twitter is roughly break even this is obviously semi-important to tesla shareholders as elon musk likely or possibly not having to raise any more money by selling his shares of Tesla to fund the business. If it can run at a roughly break-even type event, that certainly could be beneficial for Tesla shareholders. Moving on to the technical segment of the show. Kick things off with the S&P 500. We're still in what I would call a 14% trading range. We're still in an upper trend, particularly since the lows of October. We're making higher series of lows, higher series of highs. We didn't confirm it this week. I don't think anybody was really expecting that. But you'd like to see, I would say, over the course of April, Maybe into May, you'd like to retest these highs at about 4,200 on the S&P 500. You're about 70 points from there. You'd like to retest those highs. Obviously, as you come into earnings season, we had the bank stocks kind of kick things off today. We'll get more of those next week. We get the start of technology next week with Netflix and Tesla. That could be enough to retest these highs, maybe even go higher than that on the S&P 500. Any breakdown at this level and we'll certainly have to reassess that. I did want to bring up gold. I know this is so, somewhat off topic. Gold was very close to an all-time high. Actually, this is not financial advice. I sold the GLD. I didn't sell my physical gold, but I sold my paper gold at these levels. Look, you want to sell this stuff when you're close to all-time highs. This has been a massive run. I sold it up here. I'm expecting some kind of pullback in gold. Now, the opposite could be true. You could just get kind of a blow off top in this situation. And in that case, you look at your gold coins and you look at your gold Rolex and you feel pretty good about things. But more than likely, you're going to get rejected at this level, have some pullbacks. There could be some opportunities in the coming weeks when it comes to gold, at least from a trading perspective. Still not loving it at all, near all time highs from a long perspective. Moving over to Meta. This one is, you know, where's a straight arrow up? That's basically what this chart is. We're setting up towards the top of the range. We've got earnings on the 26th of April and we're setting up at the top of the range. And those earnings are gonna decide if we fill this gap between 245 and 290. What I'd like to see from a bullish perspective on meta is we power up into kind of the 245 250 range after earnings then you can start a position there play this gap fill which again is like $50 in price action from 250 up to basically 300 the reverse could be true our straight arrow up could eventually give back and then we're looking for areas of support, areas of consolidation, potentially refilling this gap between 150 and 170. A filling of this gap would also be a good buying opportunity. If you're in meta, I mean, you're on for the ride. If you're like me and you sold this one, you're looking to get back in potentially on this one. Those are the two areas. And I think probably over the next uh, 30 days or so, we're going to have our opportunity to either close this gap 
or close this gap down here. And we're going to have a decision to make when it gets to that point. Moving over to Apple. I have no idea what happened to all my lines when it comes to Apple, but we are making a series of lower highs. There they are. Boom. We've also, similar to Meta, similar to NVIDIA, similar to a lot of these stocks, we've been on a straight line up since uh, basically January. This stock has rallied from like 125 to 165. What we need, like we talked about on the last show, is we need to power up and retest these highs at 175. You don't retest 175 on Apple? Well, yeah, you're coming back down somewhere. Who knows where it'll be? We'll get some clues on that. Not until May, so we're still a little ways away. We're about three and a half weeks away from Apple earnings. Those will occur on Thursday, May 4th. Those are a little bit later than we normally hear from Apple. Moving on to Amazon. This one also made some lows back in January down here about $83. We bolted on about $20 in stock price. Here we are sitting at 100 which looks pretty good from a technical perspective. Similar to a lot of these stocks, we need for this one to continue to confirm things higher technically probably all the way up here to 113 114 but probably good enough would be a push above 105 ish 107 we could get some indication on which direction amazon wants to go as they have earnings coming up on thursday april 27th we're roughly two weeks away on that one a rejection at this area would be i wouldn't say bearish but likely retesting areas much lower probably looking south of 90 we'll keep an eye on amazon moving over to netflix this obviously is the first one to report of all of these companies coming up just four days from now on tuesday April 18th, looking very much excited about this one. Looks like it wants to set up in this 340 range. And I tell you what, you grab your popcorn whenever Netflix reports. Obviously, we could make a move above the previous highs at 375. There's some overhead resistance there, but you also got this small gap, which will prove to be somewhat of a magnet if this stock can push above that 375 range. If you get rejected here, you really want it to probably hold a level right around 300 so about 10 percent lower which seems reasonable for netflix if they don't really wow investors i could see a 10 percent drawdown that actually can be a buying opportunity anything deeper than that it's not overly alarming from a technical perspective but it will have broken kind of this uh, more shorter term up channel that we've been forming moving over to nvidia is this finally the top in nvidia made a little bit of a rounding pattern it's done that before though on this straight arrow up but for right now this stock is still like locked in this uh, meta like uptrend definitely though found resistance at this level up here at about 281 which made a lot of sense it was a previous high that you made back in march of 2022 it was essentially kind of a landing spot back in december of 2021 when a lot of stocks peaked out this would be a natural spot for nvidia to finally take a breath now complicating the situation is you don't have earnings on this one for a little while you're not going to get earnings until may 24th however you often get clues when it comes to nvidia we'll have amd report their earnings on tuesday the second and we are also keeping a very close eye on intel this stock's starting to make an interesting formation you know on this channel i love to bash this but I'm looking for a reason to actually buy this stock and we'll get some indication if that is worth doing sometime on the 27th. So on the 27th of this month and the 2nd of May, we'll get AMD and Intel earnings respectively that should give us some clues whether or not nvidia can continue to power higher at this level like yeah you can retest the levels at 330 which would be another 70 dollars higher i don't know if the risk rewards there because any kind of meaningful pullback which the stock really should do could take you down a good 50 60 dollars per share so you're kind of at a one-to-one -one risk reward if i own this one i would just continue to let it run and if you did want to take profits or you wanted to make sure you locked in profits there's an area here at like 250 ish that i would stop loss out of this one at least a portion of my shares maybe not the whole thing but i would lock in some gains because if you break 250 it's very likely that you're going to have a more significant pullback in nvidia moving on to google still looks really good now hasn't oh it's not like 
textbook when we look at like Microsoft, certainly Nvidia as well, hasn't textbook made higher highs? It's kind of hovering right here now, complicating the situation. We've got earnings on Tuesday, the 25th of this month, so 11 days away. When it comes to Google's earnings, it's setting up towards the top of the range. A rejection at this area, a pullback south of 100 is another buying opportunity. You have had one, two, three pullbacks in this stock over the last, uh, we'll call it six months or so. That have that has been your buying opportunity. You are likely to get another one. More unlikely, but possible, is you power up higher. You create like that Meta or Nvidia type uptrend, even Apple. And if you do that, you could, I think, pretty easily power up into the 120s, maybe even as high as 130s based on some of the consolidation, but you've got to get through this like 110 to 120 area with Google, which will not be easy. Moving over to Microsoft, this is what you want Google to look like. Higher highs, higher lows, retesting some highs here at about 280. There's a higher set here at 310. The situation on earnings is we are going to have earnings 11 days from now on Tuesday the 25th when it comes to Microsoft. It looks like to me it just wants to flag out here and consolidate and then we'll see how those earnings go. Maybe a little bit of Activision news as well could move that stock. Moving over to Tesla. This one's like in the weirdest spot from a technical perspective. All these other stocks look pretty darn good. Like they're, they're either on a heater and they look like maybe they want to cool off a little bit. That would be Nvidia, Meta, probably Apple to a certain degree as well. When you look at Google and Microsoft, it looks like we're just starting a new uptrend. Tesla Tesla, it's, it's hard to say. Yeah, you've making some higher highs, but you're coming off obviously a big drop here. You're consolidating very tightly in this 180 to 200 range. So it's showing me that there's not an overwhelming amount of buyers on this stock. There's not an overwhelming amount of sellers, but things could shake loose next Wednesday. April 19th, which will be joining here on the channel. I tell you what, this stock is probably going to move one way or another, but I tell you what, even if Tesla moves higher, breaks above this kind of trading range that it's been in really since the beginning of the year or so, gets above 190, pushes into the 200s, maybe we even go as high as 250 on this stock, well, you're still just making lower highs. So it's not overly exciting with this one until you kind of get above the 300s. Now, that can be exciting considering the stock's at 185. It could move to 250, 260 and just be continuing a technical pattern. The other possibility is the earnings really disappoint. Elon Musk maybe has a slip of the tongue and the stock moves lower. You have buying opportunities, I think, in this one south of 169, both fundamentally and probably valuation at some point when it comes to Tesla. Guys, we are on the eve of earnings. We'll have Netflix next week. We'll have Tesla next week. And then we'll be all holding our breath. Can the rally continue? Looks like to me, when you look at Meta, when you look at Apple, and when you look at NVIDIA, the rally's getting a little bit stretched, but when you look at a Google, a Microsoft, even an Amazon, it could just be getting going, and that's what's going to make the next couple of weeks so exciting, and we'll be sure to cover it here on the channel. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed today's video. Hopefully, you have a wonderful weekend. Be safe out there, and we'll see you again next week. Good luck with your investments.